Good morning. Welcome at St. Paul's United Church of Christ, where God is still speaking. No matter who you are or where in your life's journey, you're welcome here. And it is the welcome of God, the extravagant welcome of Jesus, who says, come with all that you are, with all your joys and celebration and gratitude, but also come with your pain, what weighs on you, with your tears, with your broken heart. Come bring it all because God wants it all. God wants our whole selves. Today we try to do eye reading instead of lip reading. It's one extra step we try to take here in our sanctuary to be as safe as possible as we can be. You will see our pianist, our hymn leader, and me wearing face covering, wearing masks, because that is proven to be one way how to prevent the spread of COVID. So if you cannot understand me, raise your hand. We do a phone session leave messages with our uh, tech team there on Facebook. We'll try to communicate as good as we can. And please bear with me. I'll probably sweat it a little bit. So uh, when it's dripping, I will wipe it. One more announcement before we move into our service. Our youth leader, Stacy Heinemann again will participate in the library Christmas tree. And she found a beautiful book that talks about how one girl is struggling to have enough food in her home to eat and how her best friend tries to help without giving up the confidence where the friend who was in need asked her, please don't tell anyone. And the theme will appear by decorating a tree with food items. And you can make food donations if you're willing to help with a tree and the message that goes with a tree. And drop off gifts of food. They may be canned foods or they may be lighter cereal packs that can be actually hung and strung to the Christmas tree itself. And best is when you drop them off during office hours from Tuesday to Thursday, 9 to 2 p.m. If that doesn't work for you, email the church office and we'll make it happen. Either pick them up or you get another drop-off location. Then remember, today is a three-point Sunday. One is Stewardship Sunday, and we also call it Love Sunday, because it's about our hearts and our loving that finds expression in us being giving people. It's also the last Sunday of the church year. It's called the Reign of Christ Sunday, because next Sunday will be Advent, and that's how we start already with the candles, with the new coming of Christ. And the third thing is, it's Thanksgiving Sunday. So let us try to focus on the different aspects of this Sunday, and also with Thanksgiving in our hearts, remembering that it's not one day of Thanksgiving, but it is an invitation for us to join into thanks living, into living gratefully. We do that when we open up to the living God, and we do that through music.
please join me in our call to worship responsively. How awesome you created the universe, O oh God. We are surprised by your beauty. How amazing is your love, O oh Jesus. It is more than we can grasp. Move among us, Holy Spirit. Open our hearts to you. Let us worship the living God. Sometimes we catch ourselves to look at the dark sides, at the challenges, and may slip into the rut of complaining. When I visit people, sometimes that happens because there are frustrations, there are struggles, there are hurts, there are pains, and there is nothing that is closer to us than our own struggles, and it's very legitimate to do that just to ache and express it. Yet on the other hand, there are also blessings to count. And Thanksgiving during this week is an opportunity to do that, <laughs> to count blessings and never to stop being grateful. It's a muscle we can practice. Look at what we can be grateful for and express that. We do both when we pray. We pour our hearts out. We wrestle, we struggle. We also count our blessings and share gratefully with God. We do that as we pray together. Let us do that right now. Generous God, thank you for blessing us abundantly. It is a gift to be alive. Thank you for your love and care. Thank you for family and friends. Thank you that we have enough to eat, clothes to wear, a roof over our heads. In your presence we recognize. Often we take life and its blessings for granted. We forget to live gratefully. We share with you what is on our hearts.
change my heart, O Lord, make it ever true, change my heart, O God is able, God is faithful, God provides. When we open up, when we long, when we yearn for the living God, God is good. Let us express our heartfelt gratitude to the living God.
morning. I'm sure everybody knows that this Thursday is Thanksgiving. What are some of the fun Thanksgiving traditions that your family has? Some people like to eat turkey for Thanksgiving. That's a pretty traditional thing, but not everybody likes turkey. So some families make a big ham or a big spaghetti dinner as their Thanksgiving meal. Besides the meat, there's also all those good side dishes. I think my favorite are the mashed potatoes and gravy, and then the stuffing and the green beans, and of course, all the desserts. I grew up in a family where we made lots of pies for Thanksgiving. So I'd make them with my mom and sisters and brothers. <clears throat> then we'd make pumpkin pie and pecan pie and a type of pie called mincemeat pie, which I never really liked very much. In my husband's family, they always made a big banana pudding as their special Thanksgiving dessert. So in our family now, we make both a lot of pies and we make banana pudding for Thanksgiving. Besides the food traditions, there's other things that families do on Thanksgiving. Some families like to get up and watch the parades on TV. Other families really like the football games. There's lots of good football games on TV on Thanksgiving Day. Some families you see go outside and play a big touch football game. We like to take our dogs on a long walk so we can work up a good appetite for the big dinner we're gonna have later. What a lot of families do for Thanksgiving is they get together with cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents. And that may be hard this year because traveling isn't gonna be possible for some families. We're worried about keeping each other safe and not sharing the virus. So if that might be true that your family might have a smaller than normal Thanksgiving this year because you won't be able to travel and see all of those relatives. Some families are thinking about trying to have Thanksgiving dinner outside to keep us safer. We're thinking about maybe doing that and hope that the weather is gonna cooperate. But it's gonna be different and it might feel a little bit sad. But I read a poem the other day. It's a type of poem called a haiku that I thought did a really good job of explaining why we're planning maybe a little bit of a different type of Thanksgiving this year. It's very simple. It just says, we isolate now so that when we gather again, no one is missing. That just means we might have to stay apart this year so that when the virus goes away, everyone has stayed healthy and we can all get together again in the future. Have you ever heard or read any of the stories about the very first Thanksgiving that explain why we have this holiday? It's different from some of our other holidays like Christmas and Easter. Those are religious holidays and we celebrate as Christians the birth and resurrection of Jesus on those holidays. But Thanksgiving, the way we celebrate it, is a fairly uniquely American holiday. And we think that it first started as long ago as 1621, when some pilgrims and some Native Americans got together to share a big feast to celebrate a big harvest. Now, we don't know if all the stories that we share about that first Thanksgiving are really true, but what we do know is it started when two groups of people who were strangers to each other initially learned to work together to meet challenges and decided to have a big feast to celebrate together. And that's what's true about Thanksgiving today. It's a holiday where we stop and think about all of the good things that have happened to us in the last year, the things that we call our blessings. Some families like to spend some time talking out loud about what the greatest thing that happened to them that year was. Does your family do that? What would you say if someone asked you to think about what your greatest blessing was? For our family, we're pretty sure that it was the birth of our first grandbaby back in February. But we're also very grateful that we have a warm home and we're gonna have plenty of food to eat and that we've all remained healthy. So Thanksgiving is definitely a holiday, a time to sit down together and really think about all the good things that are in your life. Some people in my family actually like Thanksgiving better than Christmas because it's a lot less hectic and we can really focus just on being together as a family. All Americans tend to celebrate Thanksgiving to think about their blessings, but as Christians, that's the type of religion that we are at St. Paul's, as Christians, we can also think of Thanksgiving as a time to be grateful for all the blessings that God has given us in the last year. The most important thing that we can be grateful for is just knowing that God loves us and that he has shared the most important gift we're ever gonna get, which is his son Jesus that has been shared with us. Even if we don't have all the things that we think we want, or even if we're facing challenges, we know that God loves us, and we know that Jesus is always gonna be in our hearts, so we never have to face those challenges alone. So this year, as we sit together and have our Thanksgiving traditions, and maybe we wanna think extra hard about maybe helping the people that are preparing our food, and maybe helping with all the dishes that are created when we have these big feasts together, 
let's make sure that we take some time to think about the blessings that God has given us. The fact that Jesus is always with us, always in our lives, and that we never have to be alone. And for that, we're always very grateful. So let's say a Thanksgiving prayer. Dear God, thank you for all of your amazing blessings and the way that you work in our lives. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. And thank you for your love that keeps us from never feeling alone. We love you, God. And let's all have a very happy Thanksgiving. I suggest we go right now in the scripture reading and show the ministries visibly during the offertory. So I see our tech team uh, shuffling and scrambling and here we go. Good morning. Join me in a prayer for illumination. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord, we pray. Amen. Today's epistle lesson points to the core of who we are meant to be. It describes the purpose of our existence, why we are here. John describes God as love, as the never-ending source of love. Our role is to live in that love, to let it flow into us and through us to others. God's love becomes real through what we do. Our actions show whether we live out of God. Listen for the word of God from the first letter of John in the fourth chapter. This is the first letter of John, chapter four, verses seven through 12. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. The gospel reading describes the conversation a wealthy, smart young man has with Jesus. The young man asks plain and simply, what do I have to do to go to heaven? Jesus says, in other words, Respect people, be kind and considerate, help people, do the right thing. The young, man, the young fellow replies, I am doing all of that already. Jesus loves the man, he feels for him. And Jesus asks him to do one more thing. 
give away everything you own to help those in need and follow me. The man tears up because he's very attached to his belongings and not able to let go and give up. I wonder whether Jesus is asking you and me today, what are you so attached to that it keeps you from following me with all your will, with all you've got? What, is, what are you so attached to that keeps you from following Jesus with all you've got? Hmm. What are you so attached to that it keeps you from following Jesus with all you've got? Listen for the word of God from Luke chapter 18. This reading is from Luke chapter 18 verses 18 through 22. A certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus replied, why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. You know the commandments, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't give false testimony, honor your father and mother. Then the ruler said, I've kept all these things since I was a boy. When Jesus heard this, he said, there's one more thing. Sell everything you own and distribute the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Living God, help us pay attention to you and to your good news, also to your invitation and your challenge for our lives. We pray that all in the name of Jesus, the living Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Right in the center of the court, beside the house where we live, there was a fountain. Or better, call it a well, because it was really deep. It was drilled in the rock, and it was located a little bit higher, so the well was really deep. And it had to be deep to connect to the aquifier, because from there the water seeped into the well. The one thing you need to know about those wells back then, and many wells that are dug right now, that are not just the pipes in the ground, is that the well has to flow, so you have to use it. And we had a bucket, you let the bucket fall down, and then you kind of uh, wound it back up to pull it back out. So you did that over and over, and as you dip into the well and scoop the water, get it out with a bucket, the water refreshes, more water comes into it, and it flows and keeps it healthy and fresh and beautiful. The opposite is, if you just let it sit, it becomes green and algae, and at some point it'll become a breeding ground for bugs and diseases and whatever. So it is God of flow. And that is one of the core messages of the epistle reading we have just heard. Love is God of flow. It's an energy that is not to be kept and sitting 
But it's one thing that has got to flow, and by flowing, it connects us with the living God. It's that energy of God in us and through us. And the beautiful thing about this epistle reading is where John writes that love is not just a gift from God and it flows through us, but he says we know God by loving. We experience God by loving. And that is something different than the believing where people say, well, I believe in God, I believe this and that, and we can talk a whole lot about beliefs. But when it comes to knowing God with our hearts, with our whole beings, that's on a deeper level. That's when love flows like fresh water in you and through you that's when you realize who God is. That's how you and I, how we know God. The only true way how to know God when it flows in us and through us. And isn't that the purpose of our whole beings? To be connected with God and to let love flow in us and through us. God, the source of love, God is love, says uh, John in this letter, and we are to channel that very love. <clears throat> so the question that we reflect on today is, how does your love show? How does it become visible in your actions? I have no doubt that you, if you have a good friend, there is some love flowing in between you. Just having a good friend. You spend time together, you call each other, you go out on a hike, there is some energy, some love flowing in between you. And here again, it's not the stagnant, it's not the set in stone, it's not the boom concrete saying, it's the flow that matters, the relationship best describes it. If you have a partner, if you have children, love flows. And love multiplies. I've had people ask me, well, or wonder, mom wondering, will I ever be able to love my second baby as much as I love my first one? Well, you really do. Love multiplies. And by loving and by sharing it, you grow into it and it becomes more vibrant and more real. So yes, you will love your second baby, your third baby, your fourth baby. You love all your babies with all your heart. And that's how God loves each one of us with God's whole love. That's why in the Gospel of John 3.16, it says, for God so loved the world. It didn't say, well, for God so loved only Ivana or only Randy or only Haley or only Deb. No, it says, for God so loved the world, each and every one of us loved by God, at the deepest level of our hearts, connected with the living God. It's hard to grasp that. It's hard to grasp that. But the invitation for you and for me today and for the rest of our lives and our faith journey is, how do you, how do we show and flow and become instruments of that love or channels of that love. So how do we become this bucket that drops down in the well, you pull it up and you pour it out and you do it over and over, 
connected to the living water, to the well of love, and you share it and, uh, with others. Now, God's love flows in very different ways. God's love flows in relationships, as I mentioned, with your family, your friends, your children. There is some love energy flowing there. Love also flows when you put your time and your muscle to work in serving others. Like on Friday, loaves and fishes. That's where love flows. By the way, December loaves and fishes, the third week, it's before Christmas, not on Christmas. We need your help. So love your muscle flows uh, by helping with loaves and fishes. It may be you help in different ways. Now, here our congregation, our mission, our ministries work because people offer their time, loaves and fishes, from keeping grounds from everything. Because people share their gifts. You have seen the music pieces. You have seen the uh, arts, the crafts that our youth leader does. All the gifts and talents. And the third thing is because people share their gifts, their money. And I know that God is at work through all these ways. Our traditional way of saying is time, talents, and treasures. So today, my focus is on Stewardship Sunday. How does your giving, your financial giving, how is that an expression of God's love, and how does God's love flow through you through your giving? Now, this is very specifically designed for members of St. Paul. So if you're not a member, let it inspire you, let it pass by, let it uh, do with you whatever. But every member of our congregation receive the letters from our church leadership and how they express their love through their giving. These are heartwarming statements. And it is an invitation for you to follow these same steps that you have seen in the letter outlined. And it is an invitation to join our church leadership, and very openly and honestly, they said, because I deeply believe these are the most important works, words when we talk about stewardship overall, the words, join me. We never ask you or anyone to do what we do not practice ourselves. So will you join our church leadership in making a giving commitment to God's work through St. Paul's. Will you let God's love flow in you and through you towards God's work and God's mission and ministries here at St. Paul's? And that, not all, if you don't want to give to St. Paul's, don't give a single cent to St. Paul's, but there is something about give, being a giving person to other organizations. Just being a giving person does something good for you. There is something here in the back about giving, and it's a percentage calculator. So I think it's important for us to take an honest look. Like, where am I currently in this church? Where am I currently? And then, an invitation to think, to pray, and to wrestle, and to sweat about it, and pray about it, and challenge yourself, and wrestle again. 
can I go one step up from this? You may not be able. I understand that. But the invitation is to take an honest look and to see, can I go one step up from here? What does that mean? For example, you have been giving just a little bit here or there. Consistent giving means like, let's say $1 per day. Willing to do that. Or maybe $50 per month, which would sponsor a child to participate in Messy Church. Or it may be $100 per week because our musicians need a raise badly. Or it may be $1,000 per month to cover the expense for our youth leader. Or there is no limit. The question that Jesus has with this young fellow who comes to him he has done everything right in his life. He has done everything right. He comes to Jesus and Jesus tells him, let go, give up everything you have, everything you have and follow me. And then we stop time there and think of, Jesus is asking you, in the person of this young fellow, what are you willing to give to God's work? You in front of Jesus, Jesus looking at you, a heart to heart, an eye to eye with Jesus. Jesus inviting you with your own name, looking in your eyes, looking in your hearts. Are you willing to love, and love as I do in Jesus' words. How generously will you love Jesus? How generously will you support God's work through St. Paul's?
Those of our members who received the mail also received a giving card and an envelope with a stamp on it. So you may have used that envelope, you may still use it. I encourage you to do that. If you do not, some of you may have brought your giving card today to worship. You may not have. We have some extras in the back, on the back pew, if you want one. Again, you do not have to. Those willing can place it in the offering plate in the back or also come up front here. When you come or if you come, come to this side, I'll keep distance from each other, minimum six feet. Please keep that distance. And offer your giving, offer your worries, offer your faith, offer, offer your fear, offer it all. Give your heart, your whole self to the living God. Let us worship the living God through our hearts, our offerings, our prayers right now. Let us pray. God of grace, God of glory, especially during this week, we count our blessings, what we're grateful for. 
There is so much once we start and once as we continue in that groove. Help us to live gratefully day by day and help us let this week be an invitation for us to thanks living day by day. Thank you for the, all the love we experienced, the love by the hand of those who cared for us as we grew up, our moms, our dads, our siblings, our aunts, uncles, grandparents. You placed them in our hearts, and through them we felt the love, the care, your extravagant goodness that they channeled. And they became that instrument of love to each one of us. Thank you for all those around us who pour their hearts and their love into their professions, like teachers, nurses, doctors, custodians, cooks and clerical staff, those who stack the shelves in the grocery stores, and those who do the bookkeeping, the musicians, the artists, all those who are with their hearts and their professions. Thank you that they reflect some of your creativity, some of your hands-on love. And thank you that they model through their lives what it means to be dedicated and being in it for the long haul. Thank you for the gift of Jesus who showed us how to love extravagantly. Love with his whole being. He never stopped loving. Even when he was nailed to the cross. We pray especially today also for those who are dear and close to our hearts. Those whom we know, who we know who are suffering and hurting in need of your healing touch. Especially, we pray for Johnny Green, a good family friend of Fritz and Beverly Heinemann. Ivana Uveras, who is going through several transitions right now, work-related and in otherwise. Uh, for Pat, a friend of Victoria Stark, who is in the hospital with COVID and connected to a ventilator. For Anne Rising, for Susan and Michael Bolick's new little granddaughter, Charlotte Anne, who has a heart murmur and the family is concerned and hopes, because she was born early, that she will heal and her heart will close and she will develop well. For Denise Sosby, a friend of Barb Lewis. For Amber McCradle the mother of Mike and Cindy McCradle, who is in assisted living. She fell, has COVID, a broken hip, and is to undergo surgery. For Jennifer Kelly, who is undergoing testings. For continued healing for Raven Rednitsky after she underwent ankle surgery. For our dear friends from Colorado, 
that is Janet Stevens and her family, and that the forest fire subsided, but also for all the loss and the pain and grieving and those affected in her family and in the community through COVID and through the loss. And those whom we mentioned to you who are dear and close on our hearts. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, our brother, the living Christ. And with his words, we join together in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Never forget to be grateful for all the gifts and blessings of life. Keep your heart wide open to the living one. For God wants to touch you. God is walking with you. Often invisible, often unrecognized. But God is walking with you whether on the mountaintops and joyful celebration or whether you feel like in the valley, down in the darkness, in the dumps and depressed. And until we meet again, may you sense the deep peace of the living Christ in your heart 
And may you feel safe, safely kept in the hands of Jesus. May it be so. The people of God said, Amen. You can say amen. You're allowed, even with your mask. The people of God said, Amen. amen.